What's going on, everyone? Welcome to my own game that is week one of DCL, the Draft Champions League, aka the Smogon Team Tournament, where some of the best draft players around come together in uh, teams to uh, have a tournament. That's what this is about. That's why we're here. Um, no, this is without question um, one of the toughest uh, draft leagues out there, if not uh, currently the toughest one that's ongoing, and that's because it's a team tournament. So not only are you facing some of the best players who got drafted for high prices, but uh, you're facing them with uh, upwards of 10, 12, 13, 14 people supporting them every single week. So you really have high level prep here and um, you get it yourself and, and your opponents get it and it really produces um, in an optimal sense that the highest quality matches that you can possibly create. So um, if you missed my uh, like little VGC video where I explained what this is in a basic sense, it's that essentially. It's a team tournament. You're on a team. Uh, the team has captains and they um, drafted different players. I ended up being way more expensive than I anticipated being. Uh, I ended up going for 20k. Most like the minimum budget is I think 3k. So um, I'm the most expensive player on my team, which means I really have to carry my weight this season uh, in Gen 8, which is what I'm known for playing best in. So uh, that's what we're going to try to do. Unfortunately, uh, we have some insane other Gen 8 players here uh, in this tournament, and it, I'm going to be facing every single team. So, um, you know, it's likely I'm going to be playing some incredible Gen 8 players, if not some of the best Gen 8 players out there and try and make a name for myself a little bit. I feel like a bit of an underdog despite my price in terms of taking on some of these big names that are n that are known and, and seen as some of these top Sword and Shield players out there. Um, I want to be among those names. So we're going to try our best to try and get some exciting good wins here in first uh, week being against Skyhorse, someone who um, I would say at one point was definitely considered the best Sword and Shield player um, at a certain time. So. Uh, this is someone who is very good, knows the meta very well, and has a very scary team at that. Um, these are eight Mon drops. Um, the draft that I'm bringing uh, this week, obviously there's three Sword and Shield drops that I could choose from, but we ended up choosing uh, which draft we wanted to use the most based on you know the opponent's three potential teams. Um, essentially, I uh, benched uh, AG Slash which is kind of a crazy bench, but I'll explain it in a second. Um, and then what was my other bench? My other bench was Lurantis. So uh, those are those are my two benches. Lurantis makes sense here, obviously. Like, I'm not going to be able to hit Zapdos. I'm not going to be able to hit Cinderace. Um, and then he benched uh, Drapion, which was a bit of a shock to me, um, as well as Hitmonchan, which was much less of a shock to me. So this is what we got. Now, when it comes to me telling you what the team is, I'm gonna be act I'm gonna have to be a little bit covert about it because I don't want to reveal anything that was not revealed in the actual game. On the off chance that we have to do a rematch or anything like that, it tends to make sense not to reveal too much information about the team. This tournament is so high stakes that like even something like that is um, not great. So. I am going to generally uh, give you an idea of what the team is looking like. So the Landorus here is a Sword Stance Landorus. We have quite a bit of bulk to us um, and a bunch of attack as well, um, but uh, we have Sword Stance, Earthquake, Explosion, and then a fourth move, which you might be able to guess um, if you study the matchup that well, um, but those are the three moves I'll reveal. Um, we have a Weavile, just a basic attacking Weavile with uh, with knockoff and Ice Shard and uh, a couple other moves that uh, I'm not sure I revealed in this game, so I won't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just just nothing super fancy with this Weavile. Just a, a fast attacker with Ice Shard. Obviously, like Scale Shock Garchomp is very scary. I want to be able to knock off items uh, like the uh, the Drapion's item if it had come or or the, uh, the Registeel or the Miltank, um, things like that. And the knockoff, obviously, as well, is very good against Slowbro if it's not Culverberry. Uh, the Keldeo is toxic. <laughs> um, it's a toxic Keldeo to try to catch Slowbro because basically there's no other Keldeo that looks great here. 
Um, now, what's interesting about this Keldeo is it's very, very defensive. It's an incredibly defensive Keldeo that allows us to take hits from Garchomp, allows us to take hits from Cinderace, um, and that's really great. But yeah, I have Surf on this Keldeo, but realistically it's meant to spread Toxics around and um, take a bunch of hits. I believe Zen Headbutt from Cinderace does like a third, and I'm leftovers on this set, so I'm able to recover some health quite well on top of just being really bulky. Uh, Yuxi is very interesting. Yuxi is a uh, very much a utility set here. It's going to be Stealth Rocks, it's going to be Knock Off, it's going to be Yawn, and it's going to be... what's the last move, Addy? U-Turn, right, of course. So basically the idea being to get up hazards, to knock off things, uh, and pivot around. Uh, so that everything is in range of Weavile, um, or potentially Landorus as our breaker, um, and then Weavile can win. Uh, we have a Dragalge here. Dragalge is our dedicated lead. Uh, it has Draco Meteor because it's Dragalge, so why wouldn't it? But Dragalge is very interesting because it has red card this matchup. Now, something interesting about Skyhorse's team of eight, if you didn't hear, he didn't bring Drapion, he didn't bring Hitmonchan, that means that the only Mon that takes a Draco Meteor is Registeel. And honestly, Registeel takes a Draco Meteor quite well. So I'm not necessarily, you know, safe to like run like specs or something like that, this matchup. But what I did notice is I didn't is there's two mons on um Skyhorse's team in particular that would probably click U-turn or Volt Switch against uh Dragalge, and that is Cinderace and Zapdos. And what I noticed is is if one of those mons, namely Zapdos, clicks a pivoting move on me and I'm holding the red card, then I'm looking at a, if you count, you know, Registeel, I'm looking at about a 40% shot because you have, you know, one potential mon out of, out of five mons that dies to Draco. So you have two potential mons that die Draco, that is. So if Zapdos goes for Volt Switch on me, then it could go into Registeel and that would suck, but then I could just, you know, flip turn out or whatever. Um, but uh, it is a 40% shot that Garchomp just dies, and it's a 40% shot that Cinderace just dies, because he can't choose the Mon that it gets red carded out into. And if it's, uh, you know, Mill Tank, or even if it's uh, Slowbro, that's that's important damage to uh, to get off. So red card is a very sort of like high risk, or not even high risk, just kind of like big gamble item, I suppose. I don't think it's actually that risky to run, because I don't really see a better item on Dragalge in general. So if um, Dragalge has a 40% shot to pick off a one-hit KO, um, I'm going to take that chance, and I'm going to do that. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so you'll get to see if that plays out how I expect it to in the actual game. And then we have uh, a Selgor. A Selgor is interesting. I mean, it's fast. It's good. Um, I'm not really going to say much about a Selgor, but um, I did like a Selgor this game uh, to do some interesting stuff. Um, anyway, his team. Let's look at it. So Slowbro is really pressured here, right? Because Slowbro wants to be defensive uh, for Landorus. Uh, obviously, Sword Stance Earthquake uh, doesn't kill max defense, but if he's max defense, then something like Specs Keldeo becomes a lot more viable against him. He doesn't have a water resist outside of the Slowbro. So if the Slowbro is very defensive, um, it's going to be hard for him. It's going to be much harder for him to deal with offensive Keldeo. So so we're kind of has to pick between how much it wants to spread its defenses between its defense and special defense stat here. On top of that, the item's quite big. It could be boots, it could be a bunch of other different things. Something else it could be is um, Colber Berry because it would then be able to like bait a knockoff from a Weavile and then kill me with something like Body Press. That would be really scary. Um, but it's very likely that it's gonna be, um, you know, Teleport, uh, Scald, and then, you know, some other moves. <laughs> probably something to hit Keldeo, like Thunder Wave or Psy Shock or something along those lines as well. Um, Zapdos is very interesting here. I could even see something like Specs uh, this matchup, especially since I didn't bring a Flying Resist this game, um, but also just like defensive with Roost and Hurricane and Volt Switch uh, looks quite good as well as, as a Landorus answer. Um, yeah, and just being able to spread Static. Obviously, we, it would likely not switch into Weavile, um, but I have to be very scared scared when I click knockoff because static is very real. Um, and then uh, it's also good for Aegislash, which I didn't bring. Uh, Miltang is very interesting here. It could be rocks, it could be T-Wave. It's just another really, really good check to Weavile, right, with Thick Fat. So that's potential here. 
Uh, Garchomp is very interesting. I think this is like an okay Garchomp matchup, not a great one. Um, mainly because Weavile exists. So I could see like Life Orb. I could see like uh, Sword Stance Skill Shot. I could see like uh, a bunch of different options. I could see Special to break through Lando. Uh, so it could do a lot of stuff here, but it's never going to win, right? Because Ice Shard always exists. And it's probably not going to be Yachi because Triple Axel is real. Um, Cinderace is interesting here. Obviously, I have Keldeo, I have uh, Dragalge, but those things can get worn down quick. So something like a Scarf Cinderace um, or a Banded Cinderace, uh, just spamming Pyroball against me can look really scary in endgame situations. Um, then Registeel is really scary. It could be T-Wave, it could be Toxic, so spreading status against my team, going for Seismic Toss just to whittle it down. My team generally lacks any sort of like reliable recovery, so status plus just like consistent damage like Seismic Toss is quite scary. In addition, um, it's pretty good at taking out Dragalge, like I mentioned earlier, um, and Weavile as well. Like, obviously I could be low kick, but he could be light metal, and that would uh, weaken low kick's power. Um, and then uh, he could also just be clear body and block uh, Landorus's Intimidate, and then hit me with something like an Ice Punch. You never know. So that's the that's the matchup, and I know that that took really long, but I really want to like give insight into like how this matchup looks. Um, I think there's a couple ways he could win. He could win with Cinderace in the late game. He could win with a potential like curse set with either Registeel or uh, Miltank. He could even potentially try and win um, with uh, like even just like Trick Room Slowbro or something if he's that much of a crackhead. So we'll uh, we'll see how this game turned out. So I'm gonna lead uh, with my Dragalchi. Now this turn one sequence is everything I hoped for, and you're about to see that it's about to click Volt Switch. I figured that uh, Zapdos looked really solid into my team as a dedicated lead because when you see a Selgor, you're assuming it's going to be spikes, right? So if this is defog, it's great to great to defog it. I believe it will always live a final gambit as well, um, since it has quite high HP. So leading against Selgor is also quite nice, um, and then it's also really solid because just like it looks good into Lando a bit because it could just hurricane me down, you know. Um, it's just a good lead all around that could just pivot right off the bat and generally doesn't have any like downsides in terms of what it leads against. So Zapdos was a very potential lead, and the fact that Zapdos can click Volt Switch against me and not really think about it means that Draco's quite free. Now, when red card activates, there's a 40% chance that something is going to die here, because Cinderace will get one hit KO'd, and so will Garchomp. Slowbro will take about 80% if it's the set I expect, and Miltank will also take about 80% if it's the set I expect, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then Registeel effect comes in, it'll take about a third, and then I can, you know, flip turn out or do whatever. So we Volt Switches, let's see what the red card knocks him into, and it is the Garchomp. And like that, that turn one is absolutely perfect. There's no possible, I mean, maybe, I, I think I was more afraid of Cinderace than I was Garchomp, so I would have preferred Cinderace to go down, but I'm not complaining that it was Garchomp that came in as opposed to something like Registeel or even one of the pink guys. So this works for me quite well now i'm very slow so i'm able to get a slow flip turn off here obviously rocks will come off and yuxi will have to take it but registeel doesn't really do anything to threaten my yuxi here except click toxic and i'm completely fine with that especially like since this garchomp is gone which you know the physically defensive yuxi was supposed to you know be good for um i yuxi is a bit more expendable just to get a rocks and then start knocking things off and um, that's a great thing because there's no switch in a knockoff and this is what i love about sword and shield is like everything has to carry an item so knockoff is that much more um, deadly. Knocking off the Chobbleberry is absolutely massive for a uh, Weavile and Keldeo. And uh, yeah, I mean, just knocking off Chobble is good. A lot of my a lot of my team does get fighting type moves. Even uh, Dragology gets Focus Blast if I've chosen to bring that. So um, I'm very happy to knock off Chobble. But more importantly, there's just no more recovery on this Registeel, especially since it reveals Seismic Toss, right? It's not going to be Stealth Rock, Toxic, Seismic Toss, uh, Rest. That makes no sense, especially because I have an AG Slash. So um, this means that this damage is um, unrecoverable. This this Registeel cannot gain more uh, recovery, which means that uh, Dragalge looks really solid to spam Draco Meteors. Uh, Weavile looks cleaner to spam at knockoffs as well. Obviously, certain uh, things like this Miltank still exist, but it's just one less check that we have to worry about because we're wearing it down. And then here I'm going to go for Yawn. Now, Yawn is really interesting because even though he's going to beat my Yuxi here and he could just seismic toss to KO my Yuxi, he now has to consider the fact that if he stays in and lets this Registeel go to sleep, I have set up potential with something like SD Weavile, SD Landorus, Calmine Keldeo, whatever I really want to be doing. So, um, yeah, being asleep, you're right, doesn't necessarily matter 
in this one-on-one -on -one situation. In fact, he can just kill me this turn if he wants, but the fact that he would be forced to react on a potential setup turn next turn really incentivizes him to switch, and that allows me to click U-turn and save Uxie as a sack. So I'm going to Weavile here and be uh, really threatening, right? Because I can threaten this thing with an Icicle Crash. Uh, triple Axle will also kill, even though I'm not, you know, uh, protective pads, I reveal boots here. Um, but I mean, even if uh, Weavile doesn't kill this Zapdos with Icicle Crash, uh, I don't die to any other hit. So it makes sense for Skyhorse to go into either Registeel or Miltank here. I'm gonna do just that and predict just that, that is, and click knockoff. Obviously, if Zapdos stayed in, I was knocking off the boots, which was still gonna be useful anyway for other mons. So uh, I figured knockoff was the best play to cover all situations. And again, even if I got that play wrong, Zapdos wasn't killing me with any one hit. So knockoff here, knockoff Miltank's helmet, that's quite nice, probably just for Weavile in itself. Um, and this is now an interesting turn. So we're gonna go back to it. So Miltank comes in, it reveals to be pretty much physically defensive, dedicated answer to Weavile. That makes sense. So in my mind, I could easily sack Yuxi here. Um, and Yuxi would get me a free switch into Keldeo, that could be nice. Um, it could even give me a free switch into Galgi if I want to like force more damage on Registeel, but probably Keldeo is what I would bring in after I uh, sack Yuxi. However, realistically, I feel like Skyhorse has to fear me clicking Sword Stance here or clicking something, right? I feel like Skyhorse has to fear me um, setting up or you know, just doing something with my Wii file. Because if you look at his team, right, if I get a plus two, like, you know, all of a sudden, and if the Cinderace isn't Scarf, then, you know, all of a sudden you are looking at a potential just Wii file win, um, because I can just uh, win <laughs> with this Wii file if I click SD. So in my mind, if I'm SD, he needs to think that if I'm SD, um, he probably has to click a certain button here. So what button would that be? Um, you can click T-Wave here. Uh, T-Wave would be really scary, um, and I'm weighing that consideration. I feel like he can also click like Body Press here, and Body Press would just kill the Weavile, and he would never have to think about it ever again. Um, and that's basically what I'm predicting here, is I'm saying to myself, okay, you know what? I don't think that, I think worst case scenario is T-Wave, and I, 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 since, you know, my Keldeo is so slow anyway, since I'm fizz deaf, I don't really care about being slower anyway. I'm still going to outpace Registeel in slow row in spite of being paralyzed. Um, and I just don't think uh, Thunder Wave is likely to come off here anyway, because if I click Sword Stance and he clicks Thunder Wave, uh, he's probably not going to be able to kill me with anything after. So he's still going to have to react to the plus two um, Weavile. So in my mind, we were either seeing a uh, Milk Drink or we were seeing a Body Press. That was what I was thinking was happening. So I go into my Keldeo thinking that I can save Yuxi as a sack and he goes for Toxic here. Now Toxic in a way makes sense because obviously it does cover that set of turn with Weavile, but also at the same time if I click SD there I'm still in a pretty good spot because uh, you know just just dual stab um, from Weavile looks really really good. So um, I'm gonna go into my Keldeo here but this is really bad. I don't want my Keldeo uh, Toxic especially since it's such a defensive check to Cinderace really don't want to be put in that situation. Now he has to fear a fighting move, so I'm going to go for Toxic on the incoming Slowbro. Easiest prediction of my life. Um, it just makes sense that Slowbro would come in here. I'm going to go to Yuxi, finally get that sack off, and he's going to go for Screen. So it's actually going to give me an opportunity to potentially stay in and click Knock Off, potentially uh, U-turn out on a predicted switch. And on this turn, I feel like, okay, if you're Light Screen here, you probably are Light Clay. Um, and you probably don't want to lose that light clay, especially since I have some physical attackers like Weavile and Landers back in, in the back. So I would imagine you would probably just switch into Registeel here because Registeel choose any hit. Um, I probably wouldn't yawn, right? Because Slowbro is already static. So Registeel would chew a knockoff and then I would die to Yuxi or I would die to poison and then Slowbro would be healed from a generator. That's what I sort of expect happens. I feel like. Slowbro doesn't want to stay in and take a knockoff. And if it does, why would that be? I don't know. Um, so in my brain, I think Registeel is coming out here. So uh, because I just think Slowbro's item is probably far too valuable. Uh, and I end up getting this prediction wrong. I click U-turn expecting Registeel to come in and, uh, you know, I, I just get it wrong. Um, that's okay, though, because I don't think a psychic move is going to come off in between Toxic in spite of the screens. 
Obviously, Dracology still looks quite good right now in terms of just clicking a Draco Meteor. I can click a Draco Meteor here, do a little bit more damage, and you know now it's in range of things like that uh, Earthquake from Landris, even behind the Reflect. So um, even though that Draco Meteor didn't do a ton, I can just stack my Uxie now, get Landris in for free. Even though Reflect's up, I am still threatening him. Um, and I can go for Sword Stance here. Obviously, Ice Punch is potential, but I do live uh, Ice Punch, uh, and that's good. <laughs> Um, and then I could just kill with Earthquake after. Now, is there a world where um, he could have switched out into Zapdos? Yes, potentially. Um, but then Zapdos has to land a Hurricane, you know, potentially dodge a Stone, stone Edge if I have Stone Edge um, or, you know, Explosion, which I said that I had. Um, ultimately, Ready Steel doesn't have any value, so it doesn't make a ton of sense for Skyhorse just to, like, you know, waste his Landorus on a, on a prediction here. So um, at this point, uh, he needs to go into slower here. It's not going to die to an earthquake, and I'm going to die to a scald. So I have to make a decision: Do I preserve the Landris, um, you know, to intimidate uh, Cinderace, or you know, potentially uh, fire off an explosion against some guy, or do I just take my damage? And I ultimately decide I'm going to go into Dragology here because I don't think it's going to click Psychic Move. It's probably going to click Scald, and since Red Shield's gone, there is no uh, answer to Draco Meter. Obviously, Light Screen is up, and it's up for one more turn. Um, but Mill Tank is still going to take a ton from the Draco Meteor. It's going to die, actually, the Draco Meteor, but I miss, and that's not great. So uh, he's going to Heal Bell here instead and uh, die. So this actually reveals that it was Max Fizz Def, which means that um, I think Draco Meteor was a roll against uh, Mill Tank from full. Obviously, you just saw it behind, um, or no, Light Screen wore off. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, but either way, Draco Meteor was doing a ton uh, to this Mill Tank. Ignore what I just said earlier. But um yeah i mean draco is still quite free and i'm just gonna click draco here because if he heals and then i draco then he's probably gonna have to heal again so i can just flip turn out and go into something else once that happens um in this instance it just feels safe to click draco meteor and cover any other play that isn't um milk drink right and so if he's gonna choose to heal bell and take the poison off the slow bro to uh benefit the slow bro i want to claim that kill on milk tank for sure so uh, now this is interesting. He has to go into Slowbro here because uh, technically uh, Cinderace probably can't threaten to kill me with a Zen Headbutt. I mean, maybe it can, but it, it has to land a Zen Headbutt and then it's in an awkward position um, against like, you know, Weavile uh, or even like just Landorus coming in again. Uh, so Slowbro coming in is interesting because he wants to get the hazard, the screens up rather. Um, and it's easier to do that when I, um, you know, am lowering my attack all the time. So. Thankfully, he doesn't know that I have Toxic on this Dragology, and I can get that Toxic right back onto Slowbro um, in spite of the screens. But the screens are really scary. I don't know what he's trying to set up for. And I really, really don't want to be, you know, screwed over, <laughs> essentially. Um, so, you know, screens I'm going to have to pay attention to, and I'm going to really have to try to figure out how I can play this game, still offensively, but also simultaneously ensure, um, you know, that that I'm able to wait out these screens before going for my win condition. So he makes a really good play here. Why do I go into a Selgor here? Um, well, first of all, I flip turn, right? And I anticipate that he is going to click Scald. And if he clicks Scald, then I can uh, KO the Slowbro or, or at least threaten to KO or force damage on uh, either Zapdos or Cinderace, which which I like quite, quite a lot. So um, him teleporting is generally not good because it does force me back to switch out again. I'm going to sack Dragology here, um, it's quite slow, and with light screen up, it's not going to be able to kill the Slowbro. I'm just going to go into Lando here, I'm guaranteed to live this Hurricane with my investment, even if you're max special attack. I'm just going to go for Explosion, and what this does is it's going to put Zapdos in range of Weavile. Will it put it in range of Weavile, like, now? Uh, no, obviously. I mean, it, it might put it in range of Ice Cool Crash, but uh, again, I'm not dead to anyone hit from, from this thing anyway, so I'm going to be able just to click Knock Off here. Um, and that's going to be really, really solid for me. I'll click knock off again, KO the Slowbro, and now this is a very interesting situation. He's going to reveal that he's not Boots, which means that he's probably Scarf in my mind, right? Like, Reflect is up for one more turn. Surely he's probably Scarf. And in my mind, Weavile needs to win this game. So I need to somehow KO the Cinderace and then bring in Weavile so I can kill the Zapdos because I don't think Keldeo can kill the Zapdos in one hit. And I sure as hell don't think a Selgor can kill the Zapdos in one hit. So I need to preserve Weavile, especially if this thing is Scarf. I really don't want to screw it up. Even if it's not Scarf, obviously, like, I'm not going to kill it with knockoff. So it just makes sense to go into not Keldeo, but a Selgor here. Why a Selgor? Okay. Well, if it's Scarf, I don't want to take too much damage on the Keldeo, right? Especially since I'm toxic. 
And I just don't think a Selgor has utility here anymore. I can't pick up a KO on the Cinderace, and I can't pick up a KO on the Zapdos. So I'm just going to sack the uh, the Selgor here. So this is why I kind of just didn't say anything about the Selgor, because I never got to do anything this game. So that's fine. I'm going to go into Keldeo here, and he reveals that he's Leftovers, and he reveals he's Leftovers Protect. This is a good thing and a bad thing simultaneously. The good thing about it is that... Um, we battle at speeds, which is always great. The bad thing about it is that I need a little bit of chip on it in order for uh, we battle to kill with knockoff. I probably need to get it down to about 50, 60%. Um, thankfully, it can't threaten my Keldeo. So Keldeo can come in, even though he has Protect, I still threaten with Surf. And since it does seem to be a more, bit more bulky of a Zapdos, um, I should be able to outspeed the Zapdos with Surf. So two Surfs should be able to kill the Zapdos. I get a crit on the first one, but it doesn't matter because obviously the second one would have killed no matter what. Um, and that's that. But now I'm in another tricky predicament. And that tricky predicament is this. I have Toxic wearing down very quickly. And once the Cinderace gains a couple rounds of uh, leftovers, I don't die. It doesn't die to knock off. So uh, I need to win with Keldeo. Um, basically, I need to click Surf with Keldeo to kill this Cinderace because knockoff does not kill it. Um, part of doing that, and, and Surf will always KO the Cinderace from any range, so I'm not as worried about leftovers. But the issue is, is if he clicks Protect here, I go down 25% because I'm toxic, um, and then he's something like Substitute, then I just lose, right? Because the Toxic is going to wear itself down, I won't be able to do anything about it. So I have to go into Weavile here, because I the only way that I win this game is if I KO Cinderace with Keldeo. If he's Toxic, if he's Protect, if he's Sub, um, that's bad. Um, now, the, the mind game here is that he could click Pyroball expecting me to go Weavile. I don't think it's unreasonable to click Pyroball here because Weavile coming in is quite possible. Um, and if that happens, then, you know, it's going to come down to can he, you know, sub-protect me into Pyroball range or Zen Headbutt range or whatever, right? So uh, it's quite scary. But ultimately, I sort of think that it's more likely he clicks Protect than he clicks Pyroball here um, just because... He knows he lives a hit from uh, Weavile anyway. So even if he gets the Protect play wrong on my Weavile, he can kill my Weavile and then potentially start Protecting to wear my Keldeo back down again in range of something like a Zen Headbutt. He doesn't necessarily know uh, my bulk and my Keldeo. So from his perspective, Zen Headbutt can do like 50%. I'm very close to that. Now, I know that Zen Headbutt only does like a third because I'm literally like the most defensive thing, Keldeo, that has ever existed. Um, but in his mind... It makes sense for him to uh, protect in order to guard against me staying in with Keldeo. Um, so I make the switch into Weavile. Again, if he, if I, if, if I get this wrong and he Pyroballs, I still think I have a shot to win with Keldeo clicking Surf. I just need to not get flinched by his own headbutt. Um, but ultimately, I do get the call right and he does click Protect. This means I will guarantee that speed. Click Knockoff. Doesn't necessarily matter again because I'm just, I need to kill with Surf. That's the bottom line. Um, but this obviously does make me feel a little bit better. Um, and he's going to protect here to get my toxic down. Thankfully I'm leftovers, so I'm not going to be like, you know, lower than I expect. Now he has a decision to make here. He can either just try and attack me and flinch me, or he can try and go for a double protect, obviously between flinches and crits and stuff. I think the odds are more likely. Um, plus again, he doesn't know my set. So I think the odds are more likely that if he's then headbutts here and gets a good shot, then he'll win as opposed to going for a double protect. So he's going to go for Zen Headbutt here. I agree with this play. And if I get flinched, I lose the game. And that would be such a devastating way to bow out of DCL week one. Here's what happens. We live the Zen Headbutt and we go for Surf and we defeat Skyhorse for week one of the DCL. And that is amazing. At the time that I played this, um, my team was up two to one, which means that I won this and I extended our lead to three to one. Now, unfortunately... We lost the last four games after that. So we actually, the, as the team as a whole, um, ended up losing 3-5 to Trickabye, um, which is Skyhorse's team. He's actually the captain um, of that team. Um, so did it nice? Did it feel nice to get you know a really nice, strong, well-prepped, uh, cool team done and won for week one of DCL against arguably one of the best Gen 8 players out there, period? Wi-Fi showdown doesn't matter, like one of the best Gen 8 players there are. Um, yeah, felt fucking amazing. I'm sad we didn't win the week though. So it's obviously it shows that even though you can have a really great performance, it still is a team effort. Um, I mean, I need to, uh, you know, 
keep going into future weeks just as focused on my game as I just as focused on other people's matchups as I am my matchup and uh, that's just something to really be mindful of um, in a team in a team tournament obviously um, whether you make playoffs is dependent on your teammates success as well so uh, you know we lost the week even though I won the week that's okay um, we keep moving forward and we're gonna play uh, glop next week who is also an insanely good gen 8 player our first three weeks were slated to play pretty much like three people who I would say are all considered like top maybe five gen 8 players so uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, we got tough, tough competition. Definitely the toughest competition I've ever played in my many years of playing Draft League. And I'm ready for the challenge. Um, a week one win is that motivation I need. And yeah, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, some interesting prep. I'm sad I can't share the full team with you all, but I'm sure I will at some point. Uh, yeah, see you all for week two and in future DCL matches. Go check those out, um, which I'm posting really whenever I get the time.